All right, what's up, boys and girls? Uh, we got part four of the series here. Um, again, you know, just thank you for watching, subscribing, uh, liking the videos, etc., etc. Right? Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. Um, but before we get into the two main subjects of this video, I'm gonna follow up on what I said on the last video. Now, I was gonna move away from OIC, and I really didn't have anything else to say on him until he started saying dumb shit or if he had some more stupid tips that needed to be covered, whatever. I wasn't gonna say anything else. But as you can see on your screen, somebody came to my first video and this was a couple of weeks ago. I could have put this out on the last video, but I didn't, I held off. But somebody came and commented this, uh, made this comment on the first video on a different comment, they replied. And as you can see, it says, your vids are garbage like you're moderating by somebody named Nonento. So to me, automatically, I'm 50-50 thinking this is OIC, but it could be anybody, right? I mean, it could be anybody. So I had a laugh at it and um, I clicked the little profile and it said like account created three months ago. So immediately it's sock account, probably OIC, he's pissed off, he got a little feelings hurt. Whatever, I didn't think too much of it. Um, then we go into the next picture and he wanted me to say, by the way, he spelled my name wrong, you dipshit. He wanted me to click on his profile and see that in the about me section. So you see the date that the profile was created. You see what he wrote. And again, I laughed and I wasn't going to say anything. I just, I started to leave it alone. And here's the next picture. That's what I typed out. Appreciate the feedback. It's literally all I typed and I moved on. I laughed and I moved on. And... Somebody else commented, again, that was an original comment by someone else. Maybe it was my comment. I don't fucking know. But somebody else replied to the original comment. And so I got a notification and I went to look at that comment and I noticed the fucking comment wasn't there anymore. And that kind of pissed me off because whoever wrote that original, Nonento, whoever that is, is a fucking coward for deleting their comment. They wanted me to see it and then they deleted it. So immediately I'm thinking it's OIC because the dude's a fucking coward, legitimately a coward. But, you know, I'm not sure. And then I noticed something else. If you look at the name, it's Chibi Core. So not only did this fucking coward delete his comment, he tried to change his profile name. And that's what summed it up for me that it's OIC. Who do we know that tries to change their fucking name and get rid of the previous messages or tries to come up under some new name? Who do we fucking know that does that? So, you know, you're free to think you can think whoever it is, whoever you want it to be. Maybe it's another fucking paid pig. Who cares? But to me, it's OIC. So at that point, I said, OK, motherfucker. I said, all right. And there's the next picture. Obviously, you can see he changed his fucking name immediately. So I said, all right, you little bitch. And then I noticed lately he's been talking. I've been back in the uh, Dark Dave restreams again. And I noticed he's just in there making little fucking comments, talking shit as he's moderating. Whatever, whatever, man. So on the last video, I mentioned that I know Dave knows that he lives close to him, that OIC is near him. I know he knows that for a fucking fact. And the reason I know that is because in doing these research, in this research, I'm sorry, I'm watching a basketball game right now. Um, in doing the research for these videos, you know, I come across all kinds of messages and it's like a piece of a puzzle like you put the piece of the puzzle there and then you continue doing what you're doing and you see something else and then you add the piece of the puzzle and you see something else and you add it and before you know it you start to see a bigger picture that's how a puzzle works right you start to see a bigger picture but it's not for sure you can't be a hundred percent for sure you know I'm not and let's be very clear from the start here I'm not um doxing OIC. I don't have his personal information. It ain't nothing like that. What I'm doing is using public messages that he not only said in DSP's chat, but him and the rest of the pay pigs that I'm covering paid money to DSP to read out loud to everybody. That's all I'm doing. I'm looking at messages that he made or that he typed out, he paid for, and I'm taking bits and pieces and I'm putting the puzzle together. So before starting, and I'm not going to elaborate and insist too much because you can go to Kiwi Farms and see this stuff for yourself if you want to. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
there's um <clears throat> there's stuff on Kiwi Farms that you can go look up, right? I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but um, one of the posts on Kiwi Farms talks about OIC um, last year being in DSP's chat, and you know he's just bragging about him being tired because he went to the gym and he can't figure out why he's crashing right now after some Red Bulls and just dumb shit. And this is post DSP stream, so DSP isn't even there. He's just blabbering to himself in the fucking chat. And in doing this, he accidentally lets his time zone slip, right? He doesn't know he did it, but he lets his time zone slip. And then so people on Kiwi Farm start to look up, you know, what time zone this is. And there's only one place in the world that has this time zone. It's on the U.S., the West Coast of the U.S. or Canada. I think one spot in Mexico has it as well. But it's on the West Coast of the U.S. or Canada. And that by itself is not a whole lot, right? It's just something to tuck away like a puzzle piece. You put it in the puzzle and you move on. It's, it's interesting, but it's not really nothing there. So then um, nugget number two, or we'll call these chicken nuggies then. How about that? Chicken nugget number two, speculation on Kiwi Farms. Again, you can go look this up. And if you just use keywords to search, you'll be able to find these posts that I'm talking about. So there was speculation that OIC tips under, and we know for a fact he tips under different names, whatever. He's still doing it currently. Try to fucking hide it all you want, but we know it's you. And there was a lot of band name tips going on. I think it was last year, maybe late last year, early this year, where he, somebody was tipping under band names, right? And they were just like, just depressing fucking songs or bands. And to a few different people, it came off as whoever would tip under these fucking names is like some douche some hipster douche maybe from portland or seattle or you know something like that so the band names came into play we knew it was him um you know you start to put the puzzle piece together whatever right and again this is all on kiwi farms and then number three is and you're about to hear the clip i'm gonna play the clip for you if you want to find this on pig pig go uh, type in only ice or only ice coffee, whatever you want to type in and go to the very first interaction between Dave and OIC on Pig Pig Go. And well, I'll just let you hear for yourself. Here we go. Only ice coffee cheers for the next DSP tries to do something from the Chick-fil-A in, in Tacoma. Um, there's a Chick-fil-A way closer to me than Tacoma, dude. There's a Chick-fil-A that's uh, like two towns over. I'd say maybe... A 20 minute drive of course that would be a pain in the ass get drive there get it drive back you're talking like an hour you know so all right so that's an oddly specific message right he wants him to do something and the reason this is important the reason a lot of these messages are important is because this is early on in oic's stay in dsp's chat he doesn't probably know what kiwi farms is or if he does he doesn't know the level he doesn't know that everything he says is being recorded and some guy fucking later on is going to come back and put these up on the internet, right? He doesn't know this. So it's important that he asks DSP if he's willing to do a DSP tries it from the Chick-fil-A in Tacoma. Now, if you're not from the U.S., Tacoma is in Washington State, right? Um, and for whatever reason, you know, I find cities interesting in different states. Um, so I know Tacoma, Washington. Like, I know of uh, Spokane, Washington, obviously Seattle. I know a few different cities. I don't know the geography of them, but you know, I'm familiar with Tacoma. I had never heard of Renton until I came across DSP. So, you know, some cities I do know, and that always stood out to me. He wants him to do a Chick uh, DSP tries it from the Chick-fil-A in Tacoma. Now, doesn't mean he's in Tacoma. He could have Googled, maybe Chick-fil-A is his favorite restaurant. He could have Googled Chick-fil-A near Renton, Washington, and saw that and suggested it but as you heard dsp say there's one way closer than tacoma dude it's like two towns over a 20 minute drive so you know it's a puzzle piece you put it in right and it, it just fits into the puzzle and you continue doing what you're doing so here we have the next picture and it's a hundred bit cheer and it says it's going to be a scorcher in washington state on sunday make sure you hydrate very well the day before and the day of now, first, are you his fucking mother? What the fuck kind of message is this? And by the way, shout out to Tevin every does every time he does a uh, Mama Burnell impression. I crack up every time. You know, Dave, honey, uh, it's gonna be a scorcher in Washington. Make sure you hydrate. You know, I can't do it as good as Tevin, but I fucking crack up 
And uh, no disrespect to Mama Brunel. I mean, she she's innocent and all this. No disrespect. It's just something that's funny. But how the fuck would this guy know that it's going to be a scorcher in Washington State on the day that DSP's off? If if he doesn't live in Washington State, he's fucking obsessed, man. He's fucking obsessed with this guy and wants him. But you can put two and two together. You can start putting the puzzle pieces together. This guy either lives in or has lived in Washington State, and he's familiar with that area. All right. So another chicken. That's chicken nugget number three, whatever you want to call it. Um, let's go to the next message now. All right, I had to do a quick edit there because the next, um, it's not actually a picture, it's a clip. And this is, this is the one that tied it all together for me. I've never seen anybody talk about this one. I haven't seen it on Kiwi Farms. I've never seen anybody elaborate on this. Um, if you have seen this before, you know, my apologies. Uh, maybe it'll uh, jog something in your memory and you'll be like, oh yeah. But I had never heard this message before. Um, and when I came across this in my research and I just stumbled upon this, it put everything together for me. And I want you to listen closely, especially at the end to what he says. Pay attention closely. Here we go. Only iced coffee this year. So whenever someone uses the strawberry emo in your chat, it reminds me of the guy named Strawberry that's on the Wake Up Show on Q93.3 radio station that plays in Seattle. And I'm wondering if you've ever heard it. Just to listen to it during my drive and work every morning. No, I've never heard any of the radio out here ever. The answer is no. All right, so a lot to unpack in that little ass message, right? So, by the way, and before we even start on it, you see Dave's reaction. He's so uncomfortable. He's so just defensive. He doesn't like that OIC is near him and knows it. And he just immediately shuts it down. No, I don't listen to the radio. I never heard anything. No, don't ask me that. He didn't say that, but. You can tell by his little demeanor and his voice. Um, but OYC states that he used to listen to a guy named Strawberry on the wake up show every day on his drive to work. And let me ask you another question. Let me ask you a fucking question here. How many of you can name a radio station from a state that you don't live in? Name an on air personality from that radio station and name the fucking letters and numbers on it, the call, uh, the call letters, call numbers. How many of you can do that? Probably some of you can, but it'd be a small fucking amount. So you're going to tell me this guy doesn't live in or used to live in Washington state. And by the way, this ain't some nationally syndicated radio show. This is a local show. And I'll prove that here in a minute too. But look at this fucking message right here. So anyways, before we get to the message, I was thinking, when is this from? Is he talking about 2008, 2012, 2014? How many years ago was this that he was driving to work listening to that fucking show in the mornings? So I looked up Cube 93.3 and I got this fucking message here. And this is September 27 of 2018. It says Cube 93.3, Seattle's number one for hip hop, announced today the debut of the Wake Up Show effective October 1st. And again, it's 2018. So we're not talking 10 years ago. We're talking in the last two and a half years, not even three years that he drives to work every day and listens to that fucking show. And by the way, this ain't something that you say if you listen to it one day when it started. No, you heard him say it. he listened to it every day on his drive to work. And as far as I know, they're still on the air. So whether he's still listening to them, maybe he's moved since then. I fucking doubt it because what are the odds that you move in the last, you know, year or so, especially out of state? What are the odds on that? Not great. So for me, that clip tied it all together. And we're going to go into the next picture here. And I want you to see the broadcast area for this station. It's Seattle, Tacoma, and I don't even know how the fuck you pronounce that. Puget or Puget Sound or whatever the fuck ever. That's what's... Uh, cities pick up 93.3 cube now <clears throat> excuse me for me it's Tacoma this dude lives in fucking Tacoma again I don't have his personal information I'm not doxing the guy this is my own speculation based on what I've seen the guy's in Tacoma he could be in the greater Seattle area he could be in whatever fucking place that's called right there I don't know what that is but for me 
it's Tacoma. You know, there's no getting around it. It's fucking Tacoma. Um, and we're going to show you the last picture. And again, this isn't, <clears throat> excuse me, this isn't normally what I do in these videos. We're going to analyze two more pay pigs after this. But he came, and as far as I'm concerned, that was him that made that fucking comment. And deleted it and changed his name like the coward that he is. And then talking all that shit in DSP's chat lately. So I said, you know what, man? Fuck it. If you want to go, let's fucking go. So then look at this. And this is today. This ain't even concerning OIC. If he is in Tacoma, look at that, buddy. A 30-minute drive from you. And by the way, OIC, when you run out of money, if you want to walk there, it's an 8-hour and 31-minute walk. I looked that up for you, too, out of courtesy. If he's in Tacoma, Dave, he is 30 minutes from you. When you inevitably piss this guy off, when you inevitably inevitably ban him or talking about he's derailing the stream because he's not giving you any more money. Shout out to Major Riot, by the way. When you finally turn this fucking guy off, you better hope and pray that he says, I'm going back to wings or I don't care about the money. I'm done with you, DSP. You better hope and pray because as, as I said at the end of the last video, it ain't going to be me. It ain't going to be a fucking detractor and it ain't going to be Kiwi Farms. When somebody gets to you, it's going to be one of these people, one of your people that you've turned against you. And the difference between this fucking guy and all the rest of them is look where he's at. And even if he's moved, I know, again, I don't give a shit if he's moved. I don't care. I'm, I'm done with this after this. Unless he starts talking shit again, I'm done with it. I've covered OIC and I'm moving on. But the difference between him and the rest of them, Lysa for Soul and all these other guys, is he knows that area, Dave. He probably knows the places you go to. He probably, I shouldn't say probably, maybe he's tried to show up. Maybe he's tried to see you somewhere. And I'll tell you, and I'll end it on this. I'm willing to bet money, real life money, that this guy has told you where he's at, has probably tried to arrange some type of get together with you. But at the very least, he's told you where he's at and how close y'all are. And he thinks he's your friend. He thinks he's part of the team. You better watch your fucking self, Dave. Because when it happens, man, it ain't going to be us. It's going to be one of these fucking guys. All right. Let's all take a deep breath and compose ourselves. This is good. The rest of the stream is going to be a nice, chill, two-hour, fun gameplay stream. No drama. No toxicity. We're just going to chill and have fun. Maybe Jasper will come in the room. I don't know. So we go to the actual part of the video now. A gentleman by the name of Upscaled Man, who, by the way, I haven't seen in a while, so I don't know what happened to this guy. Um, but this is uh, another one in the long line of your... Make some better life decisions, buddy. So $10 tip by Upscaled Man. Just got done work. Been waiting all day to see this festival about to smoke a bowl and watch this. So, obviously this is during the festival, one of them, I don't know which one. But he's been working all day and looking forward to the festival. And he has to sound cool, of course, because he's going to has to tell everybody, I'm going to smoke a bowl and watch this. Who gives a fuck? The festival. Are you fucking kidding me? Whatever. All right. Um, oh, and by the way, <clears throat> I went to that festival video. Look at the amount of fucking ads this guy put on that video. The little red bar is blocking one of them. That's 20 fucking ads on that video. That's like an hour long. It's an hour and three minutes to be exact. Look at this shit. Anyway, that didn't have anything to do with it. I just saw that. But then this guy tips $15. Um, another day. And this is when Dave was crying about his little ear and he tweeted that fucking picture where he's laying down like a little baby with a little pat. Well, I guess the pacifier wasn't there. Somebody added it, but you know what I'm talking about. So he feels bad for Dave and he tips him $15. Phil, use alcohol or peroxide in your ear. I've had ear eczema my whole life. It's one way to dry up your ear. P.S. I love you. Now, we've covered this already before. How many of these guys are saying that they love him? Again, it's a fucking obsession. I love you. This is a grown man that works. I love you. 
it ain't going to be us, man. It ain't going to be us. So then uh, the next one will be a clip, and uh, I'll go ahead and let y'all hear that now. Man, thank you to Upskilled Man for a $30 tip. He says the following. Hold on. He said the following. Hey, Phil, I'm sorry I've been missing your streams. They changed my work schedule. I wanted to stop by my meal break and drop this for you. Keep it. I'm your number one fan. Thank you so much, Upscale Man, for a $30 tip. All right, so a $30 tip to tell him about his work schedule and to tell him that he's his number one fan. That's a lot of number one fans that you have, Phil, that are all your number one fans somehow. They all tell you that they love you and that they're your number one fan. I mean, mathematically doesn't sound possible, but maybe you fucking know something that I don't know. But just another message about this guy works and he DSP is his is his basically what idol? It's like just like uh, was it Technical Twenty Seventy? Just like Elisa for Soul? Oh, I see you got some competition there, buddy. Your number one fan. Whatever, dude. Um. So then, the next picture. Five dollar tip, and I don't even want to read. It's so depressing. Hey Phil, every paycheck I allot, or I guess he's trying to say I allot a certain amount of money to blow, and it's either on you or Taco Bell. Now, what do you even say? Now, honestly, it's somewhat surprising to me because at least the guys fucking like. At least he's trying to put some money aside and this is going to lead into the next person we cover, by the way. But at least he's trying to put some money aside and like, OK, maybe he's budgeting. That's encouraging, at least, you know, what I mean, but you're still wasting the fucking money. And you picked the right word to blow the money because that's exactly what you're doing with this guy. And go to Taco Bell more often, even, you know, that might give you the shits or whatever, but go there more often because. You're spending it with the Ram. And maybe he is, because like I said, I haven't seen him in a while. Hey, he hasn't been in there tipping. If you look him up on Pig Pig Go, he was there a lot in a short amount of time. I mean, every day, multiple times a day, tipping, cheering, telling Phil that he's his number one fan. Fuck everybody else. So, anyways, the next one's going to be a clip, and let's go ahead and listen to that. Okay. Oh, see, old man, tip me a dollar thirty. Says you're my favorite streamer of all time. I've had your videos on my TV the past two weeks. The streams are the best. Fuck the fake tippers and send them to the guillotine. I love tipping. It's a blast getting to chat with you so much. Thank you, upscaled uh, man, for that. I appreciate that. All right. So again, a lot to break down in just a, a small amount of a message, a few seconds. Um, and before I get into this, by the way, shout out to Steve of the Dead. I left a comment on one of your recent videos. Um, this is who I was talking about. And this message in particular is what I was talking about. Um, I know you're more um, of the psychology stuff. You know, I, that's where your schooling or maybe your profession is. I think this would be something good for you to look into and break down. But did you hear what he fucking said at the end there? I love tipping. I love tipping. Where, where the fuck are you at? Hooters? What the fuck is wrong with you? I love tipping. It's great to, what did he say, chat with you, or it's great, to, you're not chatting with him, man. You're giving him money for him to pretend that he likes you and that he likes you. He's doing what strippers do. You love tipping, and you love the, the chatting with him. Dude, I, I sincerely hope you've gone away from Dave. I hope you've realized how much you were wasting because he doesn't give a shit about you, man. He cares about your money. Notice you have to attach money to these fucking messages to get him to read it and then to get him to give some type of response. That's what a stripper does, man. And I know because I fell for that shit a long time ago. I, I, was, I used to live at a fucking strip club. Where I live at, I used to live at a strip club. This is a long time ago, long, long time ago. I lived there, man. I would walk in with a bottle of Patron and a 12-pack of Corona and I would be there till 4 a.m. Till they fucking, they played uh, Twisted by Keith Sweat to shut the fucking place down. And I did that so many nights. So I learned, brother. I'm trying to help you here. He doesn't like you. He doesn't care about you. He wants your money. And you're not chatting with him. I love tipping. That's another thing. Steve of the Dead, if you're listening, that's like a fucking a gambling. It's like gambling in these guys' minds. 
I love tipping. I, I don't know. Again, you're not at fucking Hooters, man. You're in a stream with the nearly 40-year-old neat that has a mobile game addiction. I mean, maybe it's one addict feeding another addict. I don't know, but get some help, man. Let's just move on to the next guy because this one's depressing. All right, and here we have a gentleman by the name of Jax Raxor, who I'm sure everybody is familiar with. And this is going back a few weeks, maybe a month or so on a Street Fighter stream. And before the stream started, he wanted to get everybody's attention. He wanted to put everybody on all those number one fans on notice that he was going to come in. And he said, good evening, everyone. Just so you all know, I am planning on dropping a massive tip for Phil tonight. So I want you all to be my witness so he doesn't think it's fake or too good to be true. I'm going to process it as soon as Phil starts speaking. Again, just what we just talked about, the fucking, the tick or the gambling thing in their mind or whatever it is that, whatever itch they're scratching. He has to come in, he's ready to announce to the world. And it was a thousand dollar tip, as most of you know. A thousand dollars. And the beauty of that thousand dollar tip is like the next night, two nights later, there was Phil again crying about not hitting the tip goal and how he's struggling and how he really needs the money. I don't know what you do for a living, Jax. And I, I know you've been docs on Kiwi Farms. I don't give a shit. I don't care about that. But I don't know what you do for a living. If you do anything, if that was stimulus money, a thousand dollars. Like I said, the last guy, at least he was like trying to budget or at least he had some concept of budgeting of putting some money aside a thousand dollars man i don't care how much money you have if your parents are rich a thousand dollars and by the way we're probably looking at upwards of five thousand dollars with all the other fucking tips this guy's given five thousand maybe he's getting close to ten thousand number one fan again here we go i'm your biggest fan you got some competition, oh, I see, man. You got some fucking competition. I, I just, I don't understand. So anyways, next message. So this kind of gives you some insight into them. There's a $100 tip, by the way. Been a fan of yours since late 2008. Your content is fun to watch. Keep up the good work. P.S. And then he gives them some tip or hint. And DSP pretending like he cares. Oh, so that's why that happened. I'll have to look out the next time I play it. You know, and it's just $100. To tell him you've been, and by the way, that's why I say $10,000. Who knows what name this guy was tipping under previously? Been a fan of yours since late 2008. Then why are you still a fan of his? If you've been a fan that long, why are you still a fan? You should know better. You should have seen all the shit that we've seen. You should have heard everything that we've heard. Why are you doing this? Put your money into something else, man. Don't put it into the vest fund. Put it into something that is going to mean something to you down the line. Hell, give it to your parents or your family, whoever you live with. Because you clearly don't live on your own. You clearly don't have a wife or girlfriend. And you clearly don't have children. Do something else with that money. Something that's going to serve you better. Not two years from now, DSP ain't even going to remember your fucking name, man. So sad, dude. Next message, $42 tip. Nice matches so far, Phil. Hope you and your family have been enjoying the summer. Nothing too elaborate here. Just $42 more. You couldn't have just said that for free in chat. You had to give them money to say nice matches so far? Why, man? Just wasting fucking money. Next message, and I like this one. You can end the stream... You can end the stream on time tonight. And I can't even see what the fucking number he tipped there. Uh, looks like 52 maybe. But essentially, this reveals that Jax is actually the supervisor in the relationship. Jax is the manager. I'm allowing you to clock out on time tonight, Phil. You don't have to work overtime. I'm letting you go home to your loving wife and to your loving Jasper and to your loving OIC who's somewhere near you. I'm your boss, buddy. He's, he's flexing it. Good. Way to go, Jax. 
Flex those muscles. You work for him now, DSP. You little bitch. He's your boss. You show him some damn respect the next time he comes in and then drops a thousand dollar tip. Fucking idiots. And, oh, by the way, this doesn't have anything to do with the video. This was a, on a Jack's tip that I saw also, and I just fucking cracked up. So a cheer from Hulk Hogan Rocks says, Why not just admit to your WWE Champion's addiction if you like it so much? One of your mods leaked a Discord screenshot confirming you have spent tens of thousands on sweaty muscle men. <laughs> and get out of here, you fucking troll. We're going to just, let me get rid of these trolls tonight. Sorry, you guys had to see this, by the way. Let me get rid of this fucking guy here. Boom, there we go. Don't, don't talk to him like that. So, and we're going to end it on this one. So, it looks like a $74 tip to save the stream, to save Street Fighter, blah, blah, blah. And this was during the Vest Streak, obviously. The Vest Streak will end someday, but not tonight. Have fun owning noobs, Phil. And to me, that's, it's perfect. It's fitting. Is he owning noobs on Street Fighter? Because nobody plays. And by the way, shout out to Jose and Goji Tanks. Shout out to you, homies, for and everybody pour some Pepsi out for the stream snipe homies that we lost, but have fun owning noobs. Are you talking about him playing Street Fighter and just a 20-year-old legacy game, which is perfect for him, by the way? It sums him up perfectly. And he's essentially beating just corpses that are out there, zombies and shit is who he's playing. Guys that don't even know how to play the game, but are just getting on. Or is he owning the noobs by taking their fucking money? How about that thousand dollars, you fucking noob? I'm sure he owned you with that one real, real good. Have fun owning the noobs. If you could see what you're actually saying, like if you could be out of, an out-of-body experience and see yourself when you put this shit out, man. And by the way, I tried to, um, I couldn't find the clip. I could not find it anywhere. And the clip was too long for me to break down. Um, well, when Jax like, came in after the thousand dollar tip the next week and said, it gave financial advice to everybody in the stream to budget money and to put money aside. And again, out of body experience, I wish you could see it the way it makes you look, Jax. Clearly, you have nobody else that you're responsible for, man. You're not even responsible for yourself at this point. Get some fucking help, man. I'll see y'all in part five.